You got a number and wasted no time asking her out. You told her the day, the time, the place. Even told her to wear a nice dress with the highest heels she got in her collection. When you linked up, you didn't take on the date. <laughs> you took her on the experience. And then afterwards, she was playing all cool like you didn't do anything. You know what she doing? She fronting. And here are the different types of fronts you need to know about as a pilot. Let go. Hey, before you can really understand a weather front, you first must understand the difference between an air mass and a front. Let's start with an air mass. An air mass is simply just a large body of air that takes on the characteristics of the area that it surrounds. For example, if a large body of air was, of course, over the ocean, it would take on those characteristics of being warm and moist. If that body of air was to move maybe over a dry desert land, it would take on characteristics of being more hot and dry. So it's just that large body of air that's floating across and takes on the characteristics of all the surrounding areas that it's in. That is simply what an air mass is. And it's all over, of course, the globe, different air masses of different sizes, just transitioning throughout the world. Boom! Now, when you have those air masses transitioning, they are liable to, of course, connect and hit each other at some point. And that's exactly what happens. And when those two masses those two air masses transitioning and traveling throughout of course the world meet each other that boundary line where they meet that becomes the front that's the difference between the air mass itself that's traveling and the front the front is that connecting boundary line when they first bumping heads and meet each other so if they think about two fists they independent of each other these are your two air masses and then when they meet boom right in the middle of those knuckles that's the front boom and these weather fronts are simply named after the air mass that's approaching and overtaking the other air mass. So if a cold air mass is overtaking, of course, a warm air mass, that becomes a cold front. If the warm air mass is overtaking the cold air mass, that becomes a warm front. Simple as that. Air mass is floating around when they bump heads, that boundary line where they meet, that's the front. If one overtakes the other, the one that's overtaking, that's what the front is named after. Boom! Let's start with some characteristics of these fronts. A warm front. Warm fronts move slow, and they move way slower than a cold front, which moves very quickly. So think about yourself. If you were to go outside and go for a run, you'd probably be able to run a lot faster in cooler temperatures than you would in warmer temperatures. That may be slowing you down. So that's how you can remember that. Warm fronts move slower. They also have a lot of humidity to them which eventually kind of causes things to rise, that causes that temperature to rise and formulate kind of stratiform and layered clouds. Those can cause drizzle effects. So you kind of want to remember these things. Think about yourself and what happens when you're outside, when it's warm climate, you feel the humidity, you feel temperatures rising. Those kinds of things are happening as, you, as you're speaking. So think about, whenever you think about weather, think about what you've experienced in your life. And it kind of gives you an indication as to what is exactly happening. That warm air mass overtaking that cold air mass, causing that humidity to rise, causing those stratiform clouds and layer clouds to form, usually kind of maybe con consummates in a little bit of drizzle effect. And then when it clears up, it's nice and clear. Hey, hey. Next up on the list is, of course, the cold front. We're going to remember this because cold fronts move quicker than warm fronts. Just like we just discussed, you can run faster in that colder water. They also stay low to the ground. They be creeping and crawling. The way you can remember that is what happens in terms of temperature when it rises. We already discussed that heat rises. Of course, if heat rises, what does cold air does? It sinks. So if cold air sinks, that means that cold front is going to be creeping and crawling on the ground. It's going to be moving close to the ground to push out that warm air that's getting ready to overtake. And when it does that, it kind of like lifts up that air in a nice uplifting kind of motion and it forms cumulus clouds. And that is why you get them thunderstorms to formulate. So if you're ever kind of thinking about how do thunderstorms formulate, just think about in your mind what usually happens in most areas when there's a real, real bad storm. It's kind of like a cold front comes through a little bit. And when that cold front comes through, lifts up that warm air, forms those cumulus clouds. And then boom, it starts thundering and lightning and raining and all kind of stuff. Hey, boom. So now that you understand a cold front and a warm front, there's two other kind of weather fronts you want to be aware of as a pilot. And the next one on the list, you're thinking to yourself, what could it be besides cold and warm? The next one is stationary front. And all a stationary front is, is when there's a standoff. So think about that. When things are remaining stationary, it's a standoff. So just think about, you got your cold front, use your fist. Yeah, and you got your other warm front here, and they meet, but it's a standoff. One isn't overtaking the other. One isn't pushing the other out of the way. They remain stationary. They gonna fight to the death. They both want the smoke. 
when they both want to smoke like that, they're going to sit right in the middle. And when they sit right in the middle, that's known as a stationary front. And when a stationary front happens, it can linger like this. They can lock in on that thing for several days and just be stationary. Two bodies of masses of, of air just boom, locked. We locked in on this thing. And we're going to see who overtakes one or the other. And then eventually, one will overpower the other. And it'll turn into, of course, a warm front or a cold front. And the last step on the list is the occluded front. And the occluded front is kind of easy to remember because just think about it like this. It's the one where the fronts are going to be stacked up on top of each other. Because what happens is a cold front is getting ready to overtake a warm front, but it does it in a kind of a unique way. We talked about how the cold fronts, they like to creep and crawl. They're close to the ground. So they creep and they crawl and close to the ground. And it's going to come up under that warm front and they're going to be stacked on top of each other. And then that cold air is gonna start interacting with that cooler air that's passing in front of that warm front. And that's gonna cause a variety of different things. That's where you get a lot of that fog coming from. We talked about the different types of fog. If you haven't seen that video, please check that video out. Sitting right here on this channel, telling you all the types of fog that can formulate. That is how it forms. Fog can form, thunderstorms can form. You get a variety of different things because they stacking, baby. They stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking. Like you stacking them racks and them bands, they stacking on top of each other with them fronts. And that's why you get the kind of reaction that we get when that happens. That is called an occluded front. A. And these are the four different types of fronts you need to know about when your woman acting like you didn't take her on an experience. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Like, comment, and share this video. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Join the Leadership Mindset family and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. One time. Let it go.